it is coming up to like, let's say the big baking season, right? So during all this baking season that is coming up, what do you love to do? Pies, Thanksgiving's coming, fall is coming, apple pies. And I thought before I start doing pies, since I am getting questions for them, I'm gonna actually just do my favorite pie crust because I know it's gonna happen. I'm gonna start doing pies and then you're all gonna ask, wait, what kind of crust you're using? So I'm gonna put this video out there as always, remember the recipe, the recipe is in the description of the video. No matter what form of platform you are watching this on, description of the video. To start, I use a food processor. This is a 13 cup food processor. I love it. And I'm just gonna put some flour in there. And anytime I'm gonna use flour, I'm gonna scoop it and sweep it off. So that means I'm gonna overfill and then I'm just going to sweep it off. That way you don't pack in too much flour because you have a tendency when you just scoop flour, you overfill and then there's just way too much flour. That's why a lot of baking, it's best to do by weights, but we still just aren't used to that here. So we do these. So I'm gonna put my flour in, simple. Now just a little bit of sugar, just a very little bit. This is a very, you don't wanna really, the point of a pie to me is that the crust should be flaky and buttery, not overly sweet. That's what the filling's for. And then just a little bit of salt. The salt obviously just kind of counteracts and brings out all those flavors. I just blend that a little bit, just blitz it a couple times. That just makes sure all that flour, salt, the sugar, it's incorporated. So now for the shortening. We always hear about all butter pie crusts. Are they delicious? Of course they are, they're all butter. I am still in that school that will do a little bit of shortening and some butter. So I'm starting with my butter, use good butter. I know that sounds annoying to say, but the thing is, when you're not putting many ingredients into something like a pie crust, there's literally a few ingredients here. You want to make sure you do really good ingredients. So this butter, I just got it out of the fridge. It's still cold. As you can see, I'm kind of cutting it into smaller pieces, some of them bigger, some of them smaller. It doesn't, you don't want like major pieces. The wonderful thing about a pie crust, I am gonna admit, doing it by hand, I kind of love to do. But if you're gonna make a few of them and I'm gonna make a few pie crusts, it can be a little bit quicker in here. But if I'm doing one, I'll just do it by hand. So for the shortening, I do not use a shortening that is hydrogenated oils. Those are extremely unhealthy. So I like to do an all vegetable shortening that is not hydrogenated. I know, it sounds again. Those picky things sometimes sound kind of annoying. I get that. But if you can make something even better, just with one little ingredient switch, or better for you, worth it. So I'm doing some shortening, not a lot. The shortening is just kind of a, I'm gonna admit, it's a cheater way to have a flakier crust. Not that butter doesn't give it flaky, but also shortening when it bakes, a pie crust isn't as apt to shrink in as much. So I kind of like the mixture of the two. I'm gonna pulse it again. These processors are so strong that you have to be careful not to over mix. You can do that. So what I do is I go in and check and look. And if you're looking here, you still see that you have a few pieces that are maybe a little bit bigger than a pea. That's okay. You also see some pieces that are smaller. And when you push it together, look how it clumps up like that. And then you can just flake it back apart. That's perfect. That means that butter, that shortening is really incorporating. So at this point, all you have to do is add your ice water. I actually put some ice in my water. That keeps it really cold. The whole point is here, we don't want that butter to melt anymore. We want it to still stay somewhat cool. So if you use cold ingredients, yeah, you're keeping it cold. So I'm gonna put that in. I'm gonna pulse it again. I'm gonna check it here. You can see it's kind of changing the look of what it is. And now when you push it together, look at how it becomes one big mass, but you still see little pieces of butter in there. That is uber important. So that's all that is. I'm gonna take that blade out, set this aside. I always have done, ready to go, some plastic wrap. If you have it cut now, it just saves a little bit of time. So then I just bring it out, set it in front of me just all nicely, take this off. Just kind of bang it down, just to try to get all that out. 
that will probably make my dog want to come out and see what's going on. When he hears something in the kitchen loud, guys, he thinks, surely that is a treat for him. So I like to put it in plastic just because then I take this plastic and I'll just kind of slowly knead it together a little bit. Get a couple pieces in there. And do you see how it's starting to make a mass? It's just starting to form this like disc of dough. That's exactly what you want. And the reason I'm not kneading it like you would bread or like you would something else, because that would make it way too tough. It would make you melt the butter too much, which I don't want to do, because we already went to that work of keeping the butter in nice pieces, because those pieces of butter, that's what creates a flaky crust. So when I get kind of a rough disc like this, I bring all the sides together. This is why I do love this wrap for this. Bring it together, and I reuse plastic wrap like this. Like, I keep it in my, no joke. I am so my grandma and my mom. I keep it in my drawer, folded up in a little piece. So I'm flattening this out into a nice disc, kind of smoothing out those edges. That way, when I roll it out, it starts out in a nice round shape, and it makes it easier to keep that shape. So I'm gonna pop this in the fridge. I don't like to over chill it because then the butter gets too hard and it cracks when you're rolling it out. So I'm just gonna chill this for about 10, 15 minutes, then keep going. I know I said I was gonna do them both in the food processor, but I put that in the fridge and I thought, you know what? You can see how easy it is to do it just by hand because I do this a lot too. So I have my flour in there, my sugar, my salt, and then my butter and my shortening. So I just kind of mix that butter and shortening up with my flour, just to get it all coated. That makes it a little bit easier to work with. And then I just start picking up the pieces with my hands, pushing them through. Look at that, it's super easy. And yes, it's kind of messy, but with the flour, it kind of dries it off your hands. And look how quickly this is coming together. What a lot of actually big pie people that make tons of pies and are known for pies, they actually love to do it by hand because you get bigger pieces usually of butter that's a little bit more irregular and then you have a more flaky crust. So there are a ton of people that will tell you that this is gonna give you that best crust. So then I'm just kind of sitting here pushing it through my hands and you're getting those nice flat pieces, which is kind of creating almost that layering in a dough that's gonna give you that wonderful flaky crust. So as you can see, this took what? I'm gonna say 30 seconds to a minute and I would say I'm ready now to add water. You don't wanna overmix it again, just enough. So there's that, I have my water here. Guys, I hope you don't care that, no. I'm not gonna be one of those people that cleans my hands in between. They're still dirty because guess what? They're going back in there. I'm not gonna try to be like, not like I would be at home. This is what you do. You use stuff, it gets dirty, and you just keep going. The only difference is all of you are watching me, but that's okay. So I'm gonna look at that. I just am kind of shaking it around just moving it around, tossing it, and already I have my dough formed. Like that, I think that is so just easy. So I do admit, sometimes even a part of me is like, why do I not just do this by hand? I push it out into my plastic wrap again, kind of take it, I'll rub my hands together, just gets it off. So now I'm doing the same process, you saw this. I'm gonna put this one now in the fridge, then we'll go to roll out. It's time to roll out the pie crust. You can see I've sprinkled really generously with some flour. I don't want it to stick. And I have not let this go in the fridge too long. It's still very pliable. I just find they roll out better when they're not too cold because when they're too cold, what do they do? They crack all over the place and we don't want that. But you can still see the nice big pieces of butter in there. That's what's gonna help it be a really flaky crust. And that is important to do. You want the flakiness. So I'm putting a little bit of flour on top, of course. I'm gonna flour my rolling pin and as you notice i'm using a straight dowel rolling pin i do not like the tapered ones that are a little bit bigger in the middle and then taper down because then when you roll something out like pie crust you get dips in it because they're not even so when you are rolling at first i just kind of get a rough circle make sure i'm keeping that shape so as i roll i continually try to move my dough around and i'm always going around making a circle because that's what helps keep it a shape. If you just go from the middle and out, it works, you can do that. You kinda have to find what works for you, but I just find for me, if I continually move it, if I continually kinda just do a half turn that goes in a circle, I get more of a round pie crust, which is kinda what you want. 
Oh, and I, this is what I love. I love when you see those big ribbons of butter in there. That means it's gonna be a good crust. So I'm gonna finish rolling this out. I'm gonna take it about one inch or two inches bigger than my pie plate. Always use a glass pie plate. They conduct heat really evenly. And they also, you can see how they're baking because you can see the bottom of them. So I'm gonna finish rolling this out, then we're gonna put it in there. I've rolled this out and I'm checking it with my pie plate. I just set it on top. I look at what I have around. And then if you're worried that it did start sticking, take just like a cake froster spatula. You can just go right under the underneath, check it all around. It's releasing pretty well, pretty easily. So obviously then we've kind of all seen this. You pull it up over, you roll it up, you take your pie shell, actually your pie plate. Terminology. Mm. Who needs it? And then the big thing here to remember is you don't want to sit and stretch it and push it necessarily down into all those corners. You want to lift it and let it fall down in. If you're going to stretch it, if you're going to push it, that creates areas where it's going to want to retract when it's baking. So that's what makes them shrink. So just let it fall in. For this one, I'm going to keep it like this because I'm going to make Yes, a lattice crust with this. So I'm gonna leave it like this. I'm gonna put it in the fridge till I'm ready to fill it. But at this point, you could also, what I love about pie crust, you could crimp it, freeze it, keep it in the freezer for up to like three to six months. I always have a couple in my freezer because look how easy this was. In like 30, 40 minutes, you're gonna have two to three pie crust to go in the freezer. Then you have pie whenever you want. You can pull it out, fill it, bake it. It's good to go. So I hope you see how easy pie crust is. Make some, throw them in the freezer because you're gonna need to come back and we're gonna have to make some pie together, okay? I see pie in our future, which that's always a good future. So share it around, tell me what you think. I'm gonna keep making pie.